Hello. Today we're going to go over really quickly how to use Google Earth to find positions and find distances and directions between them. So first we'll get started by opening Google Earth. If you have this image, Google Earth Pro, on your desktop, just double click it. If not, go to the Cortana search bar and type in Google Earth and it'll come up. It'll probably say Google Earth Pro, but either way, that's it. It's preloaded on all Sox City High School computers. So we'll just close the little info box that pops up and we'll see the earth floating there in front of us. If we go up to the search bar, we can search for wherever we're trying to find. In this case, we want Sockestee High. And I've included in the instructions the address and everything. You might need to type all that in. I've typed it on my computer so much it comes up. You hit the word search and go for a ride. The earth rotates, you zoom in, and before you know it, you are looking down on Sockesty High School from space. There's the building, the tennis courts, the parking lot, etc. So we want to drop a pin there because it's going to be our starting point. So we come up here and there's these little yellow thumbtacks. That's the thumbtack we want to drop. If we click on it, it'll put it at the place we searched. And it gives us an opportunity to label it. I just type SHS, label mine SHS, and click OK and it'll be helpful to have it labeled. Um, so once we've got the thumbtack there, the instructions say drag it to your starting point. If for some reason it doesn't land where you want it, you can click on the thumbtack and then you can actually drag it around and move it. Okay. So the next thing it tells us to do is to find a place on the beach that's the closest to the school. Well, we can't see the beach, but over here on the right is a plus button that lets you zoom in and a minus button lets you zoom out. So zoom out till we see the beach. There it is. And where on the beach looks the closest? Well, let's click a thumbtack and there it is. Notice our hand changes to a pointer. That lets us know we can drag it. We'll put it on the beach where uh, it looks like pretty close to me. And I'll come up here, highlight the name and call it beach and say, okay. Now we need to be able to find how far that is and in what direction. We're going to use the line tool. That's this ruler here. Click on the ruler, click on the line tab, and we can set what we want distance measured in. We want it in kilometers because it's science class. Then we get this cool little box and whisker looking icon, click on the first thumbtack, and then drag your cursor and click on the second thumbtack. And when I say click, I mean push and let off. It'll draw a line and we'll get the distance and we'll get the heading. So we have 7.28 kilometers, 137.13 degrees. On our paper, we would come down to the data table and from our school to the beach, we would type 7.38 kilometers. And for our heading, we'll just round all our headings to whole numbers. This would be 137. So we'd put 137 right there and that would work. The place you find on the beach is not going to be the exact spot as mine. Your numbers may be a little different, but that's fine. You're, you're trying to make your best guess and then we'll see. Now the instructions say hit clear and try again. And what you can do is hit X anytime you're not using it, get that box out of the way. But the next place we want to find is Bermuda. If you think you know, you can try zooming out till you see Bermuda or you can come up to the search box and delete everything else in there and type Bermuda. And uh, of course you don't want the one of the hotels in Myrtle Beach, you want the island of Bermuda. And then you click search and wow, we see Bermuda's way out there in the ocean. And again, you can click drop a pin, type the word labeled pin Bermuda, click OK. Now, in order to measure this one, we're going to have to zoom out a good bit. So we zoom out till we can ah see both our pins. There's Sockesty. Now we can't tell which is Sockesty and which is the beach. If you'll come over here on the left, all the pins that you create get listed here. We just click on the check beside the word beach, turns off that pin. Now we can see the two that we're interested in. And this allows us to again use that ruler tool to get the distance and direction from Sockesty to Bermuda. Uh, and look, 
Most people don't realize that. I think Bermuda is down in the Caribbean somewhere, or at least down close to the Bahamas and Florida and all, but it's not. Bermuda is almost due east, straight off our coast, right out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So that's how you will find Bermuda in the distance and the heading. And the third thing it tells you to do is put a pin on Key West and one on Havana, Cuba, and find that. Do it the exact same way. Okay, so let's talk about part two. Part two actually has you go on a trip, a journey that starts at Socasty and then goes five other places. So what I'm going to do is turn off all the pins except SHS. And if we'll put our cursor right here on the name of our pin and double click it, it'll take us right back to Socasty. So even if you're down in Cuba, instead of trying to zoom out and drag your map all over everywhere, you can just double click on the name and it'll go right to it. Now, we ask that you please stay within the state of South Carolina so that the map isn't getting too huge. You can even stay within Horry County if you want to. As we zoom out, watch what happens. We zoom out, we start to see less detail. And, I mean, you could do five places here, Forest Brook, Bucksville, Oak Island, stuff like that. Or you could zoom out enough that you could see Bucksport, maybe, in Georgetown. Uh, and that's fine. You can stay close or you can zoom on out. Notice now we see county lines. This is Horry County here. This is Georgetown County. Or if we keep going, the county lines will disappear and we see the state of South Carolina. And we just ask that you stay in here. So for this journey, since you need five more stops, let's say that I knew the first place I wanted to go was Francis Marion University. I would start typing Francis Marion and I see Francis Marion University right there. Hit search. And it's going to go to it. And I can click on the pin. And I would probably just do number one because that's my first stop and click OK. There we go. Now let's say that you really don't know the names of places. You just want to look for somewhere. Well, you could back it on up. And go, oh, there's Darlington. That looks like a cool place to go. I want to think I want to go to Darlington next. Well, click on a pin, grab it. Remember, once the once the hand turns into this pointer finger, you can push down and hold your cursor down and drag it where you want it and turn it loose. Then highlight the name and we'll call that number two, because that's stop number two. And you need to do that too. You've got five different stops. Okay, and I'm not going to do all five, four, because you're going to do your own. You're not going to do mine. Remember, if you need to move the map, as long as you have this flat hand, hold down your cursor and drag, and you can move the map around. But in the end, if we look at the assignment, we have a table to fill out where, from Socasty, what's the distance and heading to point number one? And what is point number one? I would type in Francis Marion University here. For point number two, I'd type in Darlington right here. But to find this, remember we need to measure. And this time we want to leave the lines on the map. So we would hit our ruler icon. I'd grab it and for me and move it out of the way of the line, the thumbtacks. Click on line and then click at one thumbtack. Click at the other thumbtack. Now we want that line to stay on the page, so we need to hit save. You can just call it one for path number one and notice it'll turn red. And then the directions tell you, we want you to use the snip tool to take a picture of that map. We already learned how to use the snip tool in one of the other ones. Remember, you can just type the word snip right there. The snipping tool will come up. Um, and then when it does, you'll click new. It'll gray out. And basically, if, if you need to, you can move this box out of the way. You want to take a picture of the part of the screen showing your map. Yep. And then you'll paste it into the document right there. Now, once you've got all five, okay, and you'll have five red lines. I've only got three. For part six, you want to find the distance and the heading from where you ended back to the first that would be called the resultant or your final displacement. So you want to use your ruler one more time and um, you want to click on it. 
on your last one. That will give you a distance and a heading. And then you also want to snip this, your whole trip. So we see the legs of your trip in red and then your final displacement in yellow. Take that picture also using a snipping tool. Paste it right there. Okay, that's how you use Google Earth. I'll talk about the directions for number seven in class. Thanks.